Welcome everyone to Samarkand, Uzbekistan, where the World Rapid Championships 2023 are happening. It's Tigran Petrosian versus Magnus Carlsen. We can see Tigran on the screen, but where is Magnus? The arbiter comes and starts the clock. Tigran says, please wait, let the world number one come. But the rules are rules. You have to be on time. The timer starts. The clock has begun. Well, it's only 15 minutes plus 10 seconds increment. And where is Magnus Carlsen? Already a minute has passed by. Look at that. Magnus's resting area is just next to the playing hall. So it's not like Magnus is too far away. But it seems like he has been misinformed about the starting time. And there he arrives. Magnus is late by a full two minutes. He has 13 minutes on the clock. You can see that he is unhappy. He's shaking his head. But one of the things that Magnus always does is that he calms himself down when he comes to the board. You know, he's not like, oh, I'm late now and I have to make my moves quickly and so on. He removes his jacket. He puts his player card to the side and very likely that he'll adjust all his pieces. Yes, that's what he does. That's important for him to get into the zone of the game. And he begins the game with 1e4. He pushes the king pawn to e4 and g6, the modern defense. It's a very interesting choice by Petrosian. He wants a fighting game of chess against the strongest player on the planet. Bishop goes to g7 and the knight comes out to f3. And you have the pawn pushing forward. You can see black is taking less space on the board just so that white can overextend himself and later on black can strike. So knight comes here and attacks the pawn right in the center but Magnus can actually defend it with his c-pawn which is exactly what he does and it blunts the bishop here the pawn is pushed forward and Tigran says I want to open up the position for my bishop and what can Magnus do he can either keep it that way or he can push the pawn forward which is an interesting decision made by Magnus the reason why it's interesting is because he will have to lose a move. There you have it. When the knight moves, he has to push the pawn. And now Petrosian can strike in the center with his pawn. Which is an important move in the King's Indian. Very nice. Pawn comes to f5 and then the knight develops behind it. Generally in the King's Indian, you have a knight on f6 and pawn back on f7. You have to move the knight, then engineer f5. Here he's got it in one blow, which is actually not at all easy. Magnus goes knight g5, realizing that the opening hasn't gone so well, he's trying to be creative. He's looking at the e6 square for his knight to jump into. But that square is well defended by the bishop, and so Petrosian simply castles it out. And Magnus now has to decide whether he wants to castle. He castles it. But this is a bit risky because if black pushes his pawn to f4, it closes things down. But then the attacking chances can start. There can be a pawn storm on the king side. Petrosian taking his time. He plays in the center of the board. Very interesting choice. He is hacking away at all the important squares in the center. How is Magnus going to react to this? Is he going to take on c6? Hmm, doesn't look great because then the knight can take it and then settle down in the center. He goes queen b3. And notice how the queen very quietly is looking at the black king there so have to be careful he moves his king away to h8 now the king is pretty safe on the h8 square magnus plays his bishop to d2 he says i don't have anything very useful to do right now so why don't i connect my rooks and that will be useful in the long run Ooh, pawn to f4 has been pushed clear battle lines have been drawn Magnus has to play on the queen side. Black is going to play on the king side. Very, very interesting. Now, the C file can become important for the rook. But Petrosian says, sorry, my friend. That's not going to happen. I'm closing it down. The queen moves away. One of the ideas is to push the pawn forward to open things up. But I think it's time to kick this knight away. It's a guest that has overstayed its duration on that square. Knight comes to e6, bishop takes, and whenever this trade happens, then queen can go and pick up this pawn, or something else, like knight g5, knight, uh, knight h7, knight g5, knight e6 can happen. 
But Tigran says, I am going all out for an attack. He wants to break Magnus' king side. G3 is played. Now imagine a queen landing on this square here on H3. It's a mate in one. So Magnus has to be careful. He's losing a pawn. Not only that, his king is weak. Is he in big trouble here? Is Magnus Carlsen in big trouble? He plays his knight to d5 and tells Tigran, you can't take the pawn. There's a fork here. So you can't do it. But Tigran takes it. He says, if you take here, there is a mate. Oh, but Magnus instantly plays rook e1. He sacrificed the pawn. The point is, if you go queen h3, there's bishop dropping back and mate is, is saved. And now there's a fork here. So Magnus has sacrificed a pawn here for just positional compensation. Look at his beautiful knight. And the bishop dropping back. This is some insane understanding by the world number one. Or maybe it was a forced thing. But whatever it may be, his position does look slightly better than before now. Petrosian takes the knight. Pawn takes by Magnus very quickly understanding that he has to take with the C pawn. Okay. Let's take stock here. Yes, the queen is attacked, but it's going to move away. And that's what Petrosian does. He moves it away. And Magnus comes back with his bishop. White is a pawn down. Black has all his eight pawns on the board. While white has only seven. B6 now strengthens the queen side. And the center. Magnus first pushes the queen away. Says that it's to take here may not be feasible for you. Uh, queen h5 goes back. And now, guys, with the king side bolstered, what does Magnus Carlsen do? This is a typical move that you must try and find. It's a beautiful move here for white. And there's a lot to learn out of it. B4. Exactly. If you take this pawn, my rook opens up and the bishop comes in and puts pressure on d6. If you don't take, then white will take. And then if b takes, then the b file opens up. And if you play d takes, then the d pawn is a passer. So in that way, it's very, very difficult. So g5 played, pawn takes pawn. And what does black do now? Takes with the b pawn. That's the lesser evil right now. But the underbelly of black's position has been exposed. The d6 pawn. And how do you attack it? Magnus shows the way. He goes queen a6. d6 pawn is hanging very difficult to defend it it has to be done by the rook but then the rook now leaves the control of the a pawn but i think magnus hardly cares about the a pawn he's going after the big fish he's going after the b file the seventh rank and taking this pawn this is looking very very dangerous for petrosian he's trying to open up the king side but magnus keeps it closed and while nothing's really opening up for black on the king side the queen side is just disintegrating here. He comes back to g6, trying to attack this pawn on e4 with his knight and the queen. Magnus goes to a5, attacking the rook. The rook, if it moves away, the d6 pawn will fall. So you have to come upwards. But then the rook is exposed and undefended. So Magnus has played this beautifully. In spite of being a pawn down here, he's putting so much pressure on his Armenian opponent. What is Petrosian going to do? He goes rook d7, but now the other bishop comes into attack. The rook moves away. But hey, isn't the d6 pawn now completely hanging? Magnus takes it and this pawn is worth its weight in gold. Because now it's very, very difficult to defend the e5 pawn, the c5 pawn. There are too many problems for black to grapple with. He goes queen h5. The only hope that black has in this position is to somehow get the bishop here. And sacrifice itself for the h4 pawn to open up the king side. If that does not happen, then white is winning. Bishop c3, again a nice move, putting pressure on the e5 pawn. Magnus is playing also very quickly. If you look at the time, he has close to 9 minutes on the clock. While his opponent just has 1 minute. Which means Magnus arrived 2 minutes late. Has an 8 minute time advantage. <laughs> He's played... 10 minutes faster than his opponent. That's huge. That's huge. That just shows how high class Magnus is as a player. How quickly he can make decisions. Bishop comes out. The idea which we had mentioned. 
could still happen on the board. So Magnus has to be careful. Attacks are all across there. But he, he must keep control. He goes rook b5. He says, I'm not really afraid because if you take here, I take back and later on the e5 pawn is also hanging. So that's a big problem because that opens up the position of the black king. Now Petrosian is thinking what to do about his c5 pawn. It's very difficult to defend it. Almost impossible. He goes knight g5. He wants to sacrifice his knight because after take take, he wants to double down the h file and deliver a checkmate down there. Although there could be a defense, Magnus simply ignores it. Ooh, his king falls down. But that's okay, says Magnus. And now, Tigran has to find a way forward. He gives a check. The bishop chops it off. Pawn takes. A very, very professional move could be to go king h2 to block the h3 pawn. Once the h3 pawn doesn't move, there can be no question of an attack. But what is Magnus going to do? These are the moments where a top player really finishes off his opponent in style. And we have a lot to learn. Because oh, very often, we botch up winning positions. Look at this move. Full control, attacking the h3 pawn, and not letting the black queen come into the game. King h7 is played. But hey, now it's a free pawn. Magnus chops it off. And if you count the pawns again, white is now two pawns up. Wow. That's a lot of material that White has won from being a pawn down. He's won three pawns. Petrosian, not so sure about where his bishop belongs. Wherever it goes, it's a terrible piece. So it doesn't really matter. The D pawn is pushing forward. What a strong passer it is. With the support of the queen and the rook and the bishop, it seems like the position is all but over. If there's anything that... Petrosian wants to do. It's now he goes rook g8. But Magnus simply trades off the rooks. And he resigns there. Petrosian. Magnus Carlsen scores a win. What a nice win by him. Showing great positional understanding. By sacrificing a pawn. Giving up a pawn. And then using his pieces to open up the queen side. And win the game. Excellent quality of chess. AG, what are you doing? I'm on Wilder. AG, why are you being so nice to me? I'm on Wilder. AG, why should someone be on Wilder? I'm on Wilder. <laughs>